Okay, so remember you choose one of either hazards, ecosystems, and resource reliance. This PowerPoint is for the hazards option. So remember your hazards section is broken down into two further sections. You've got your tectonics section, and then you've got your weather hazards section. So you've got some key terminology that you need to look at on here. And then if we start with the tectonic section, so we need to be able to talk about our different types of plate boundaries. So we know that a constructive plate boundary is where the two plates move apart. This creates a nice gap where the magma can rise to the surface. That lava is very runny and it flows a long distance before it solidifies. So creating a shield volcano with a wide base and shallow sides. These volcanoes are not very explosive because the magma is able to escape very easily. A destructive plate boundary is where you have an oceanic plate and a continental plate coming towards each other. The oceanic plate is more dense, so it sinks beneath the continental plate. The oceanic plate that has sunk down into the mantle has gone down into the subduction zone, where it melts and creates excess magma, which builds up pressure, which eventually explodes as an explosive volcano. The lava here is very viscous, it's very thick, it doesn't flow very far before it solidifies. And so with alternate layers of ash and lava, we get a composite volcano forming. You also get earthquakes forming at a destructive plate boundary. And I'll explain it's the same process as for a conservative boundary. So at conservative boundary, you've got two plates sliding next to each other. There's no volcanoes because there's no magma involved here at all. As the two plates slide next to each other, they get stuck. That builds up pressure over hundreds of years sometimes. They eventually slip past each other. And as they do so, they release all of that built up energy as an earthquake. And an example is the San Andreas Fault. You've also got the collision boundary, which is where two continental plates come towards each other. Because they're the same density, there's no subduction. Instead, they push upwards to form fold mountains like the Himalayas. In the Himalayas, we do get lots of earthquakes, but we no longer get volcanoes because it's too far to the surface with the big fold mountains that have been formed. So for your weather hazard section, you need to be able to talk about high equals dry pressure and low equals wet. You need to be able to talk about the windiest places, the wettest places. So the windiest places, you could talk about Mount Washington, which is a barrier to the trade winds, Mount Everest, which reaches right up into the jet stream. You could talk about the fastest winds ever recorded were Hurricane Olivia on Barrow Island in Australia. You could talk about the wettest places around the world. Um, and you can talk about Cherrapunji in India being the wettest place. Uh, you could talk about the differences in terms of extreme weather. So remember, we talked about uh, the difference between the UK and Australia for the UK. An average summer temperature is 20, an extreme temperature is 30. In Australia, an average temperature is 30, an extreme temperature is 40. So it depends on where you are in the world, what is classified as extreme weather. You also need to be able to talk about um, tropical storms and the hazards that we associate with them. So being able to talk about the fact that the tropical storms form between 5 and 20 degrees either side of the equator. They do not form at the equator because the Coriolis force is not strong enough to, to spin them into action there. You need to have waters that are warmer than 26.5 degrees and deeper than 70 metres so that you've got a big enough body of warm water for the rapid evaporation to power the storm. 
And when you do get these big tropical storms, you need to be able to talk about the fact that the hazards are the strong winds, the heavy rainfall, and the storm surge, where the low pressure rises the height of the tide, height of the height of the coastal water, which leads to terrible coastal flooding. So here we've got describing the distribution of the tropical storms. So we're talking about across Central America, clustered around the east coast of Central and North America. You need your named examples. So your named example of a weather hazard outside of the UK is Typhoon Haiyan in 2013. And remember, they can ask you specifically about the causes, the consequences or the responses. You need to know the difference between the three so you get your answer correct. So place specific causes. So this is in the Philippines, which is seven degrees north of the equator. So it is in the cyclone belt. So the water is warm enough and deep enough for the rapid evaporation to start the storm. The Coriolis force is strong enough for it to spin. Um, and you've got this series of islands where there's very little place for people to be able to evacuate to safety. Consequences, you had the 5.2 metre storm surge that destroyed 90% of the city of Tacloban. You had extremely strong winds that damaged the buildings and heavy rainfall. 6,300 people died, crops were damaged, 2.86 billion pounds of damage in total. And then the responses were the tents for shelter, the food and water so that people had necessities to survive, medicines, 50,000 solar lanterns, the hashtag that people could use to call for rescue if they had signal on their phone. And then you had the long term responses where they were given seeds and tools to replant their crops. Then you got the UK drought in 2018. Again, you need to know the causes. May and June were the driest on record for some parts of the UK. You had blocking high air pressure that sent any low air pressure systems that tried to come across away and kept high equals dry pressure across the UK. And the temperatures rose above 28 degrees for more than 16 days. Consequences. We had a very poor pea crop, but a good lentil crop. So depending on what type of farmer you were, you either found it difficult or you did well. It was very hard for farmers with animals to keep them cool. They lost lots of them. There were record attendances at A&E, people suffering from dehydration and heart failure. The tarmac melted in some places. A man had to be rescued where his leg got stuck in Newcastle. Sales of barbecues went through the roof and those businesses did really well. There were wildfires on Saddleworth Moor and lots of people had to be evacuated and the air quality was very poor for a period of time, as well as low oxygen levels in the rivers, which harmed the fish. In response, the government introduced a hosepipe ban for northwest England. They were not allowed to use their hosepipes to water their garden or wash their cars for a period of time to reduce luxury uses of water, reduce the amount of water they were using. People were encouraged through campaigns to take short showers and to use less water and avoid the sun between the hours of 11 and 3. And then your tectonic hazard, and make sure you do not get mixed up between weather hazard and tectonic hazard. Your tectonic hazard is the Nepal earthquake of 2015. So this was a collision boundary, the Indian and the Eurasian plates colliding to form the Himalayas. 7.8 on the Richter scale. The focus is just 15 kilometers deep and the crust had moved three meters in places. So the shaking was very strong at the surface. 8,635 people died. 19 climbers died on Mount Everest where there was an avalanche. The fields were covered in debris, which destroyed farmers' crops so they couldn't make money from their land. It cost them $5 billion to rebuild, which is 20% of Nepal's GDP. That meant they didn't have that money to spend on infrastructure, on schools, on hospitals, 
on developing their country. And thousands of people were forced to live in tents for a very long time. Lack of sanitation, lack of running water, diseases spread very quickly through those tented cities and more people died as a result. Responses, other countries sent food and water. India sent 10 tonnes of blankets. The USA, the UK, China sent response teams and a mobile hospital and medical supplies. So then again, you've got your Typhoon Haiyan on there and you've got your causes, consequences, responses. You can have a little look through again. You've got your Nepal earthquake as an answer and your UK drought as an answer. Have a look at some of these questions. So what do we mean by uh, a, a hotspot, a volcanic hotspot? So this is where in the middle of a plate, not at a plate boundary, there is an extra hot plume of magma rising to the surface and a weaker point in the crust. So the magma is able to break through, creating a hotspot volcano. Classic example is Hawaii. The plate is moving over the hotspot. So you get a series of islands forming over time. Structure of the earth. So remember, we've got the, the crust, which is solid. And then you've got the semi-molten mantle beneath it. And then you've got the solid core right in the center of the earth. The processes at a destructive plate boundary we've talked about. Why do deep focus earthquakes cause less damage? Well, because the seismic waves have a longer distance to travel, so they cause less damage when they get to the surface. These are the what's not come up yet. So important to look at is the global circulation model. So this is for your weather hazard. So we need to be able to talk about the fact that heat is transferred from the equator to the poles by the ocean currents and the winds to keep the Earth's temperature in balance. So at the equator, the air is rising. We have low pressure, which brings clouds and rain. At 30 degrees north and 30 degrees south, that air sinks, giving high equals dry pressure. And this is where we have our deserts. That air then returns itself to the equator and continues to go round in a circle, which we call the Hadley cell. And you've got Hadley cell to the north and Hadley cell to the south of the equator. That Hadley cell creates distinct climate zones, which bring extreme weather to different parts of the world. At the equator, you've got constant low pressure, so it rains all the time. At 30 degrees, you've got constant high pressure, so it is extremely dry and hot all of the time. Then you've got how do high and low pressure belts create distinctive climate zones? So where we've got low pressure, it rains. Where we've got high pressure, it's extremely dry. How has this frequency of droughts changed over time? It's increasing due to changing climate. So we need to be able to talk about the El Nino phenomenon. So this is where we've got South America and Australia and we've got the Pacific Ocean in between them. So in a normal year that we've got at the top, you've got cold air off the coast of South America around Christmas time. Cold air means the air is sinking, which gives us high pressure and dry conditions. This is really good for fishing with the cold upwelling of the water. That air then makes its way across the Pacific where it's much warmer off the coast of Australia. Warm air rises. This gives us low pressure and it's wet. And that forms a cell across the Pacific Ocean going round in a circle, which we call the Walker cell. Now in an El Nino year, for one reason or another, we don't fully understand why, the water off the coast of South America is much warmer than usual. So instead of cold water making the air above it cold and sinking, the warm water makes the air warm above it and rising. So we get low pressure where we would usually get high pressure, which means we get rain instead of dry weather. 
What this does is it reverses the entire Walker cell. And over by Australia, instead of rising low pressure, we've got sinking high pressure. Instead of the usual rain, we've got a dry season. They've already had their dry season. This should be their wet season, but they've got another dry season. So this creates drought for Australia. In terms of a La Nina year, La Nina is an exaggerated version of a normal year. So in a La Nina year, we get drought for South America because their high pressure becomes extra high pressure, extra dry, which leads to drought for them in a La Nina year. So you've got a question about La Nina there. Then we've got a non-UK weather hazard you've studied. So that's going to be Typhoon Haiyan. UK based weather hazard. That's going to be the UK drought. You've got processes at a constructive plate boundary, processes at a collision boundary, processes at a conservative plate boundary that you need to know. How do earthquakes occur? So we've talked about this, where the two sliding plates get stuck, pressure builds up, they slip past each other, and that pressure is released as seismic waves or an earthquake. Depth of the focus we've talked about. How do volcanoes differ? If you get a question about that, you can talk about your shield volcano at a constructive boundary, composite volcano at a destructive boundary, hotspot volcanoes in the middle of a plate, Outline the place specific causes of a tectonic hazard. So remember, it's really important that you remember specifics. So you remember, for example, the names of the plates, the Indian and Eurasian plates. You remember that the focus was 15 kilometers. You remember that it's 7.8 on the Richter scale. You've got to remember those place specific facts and figures. Okay, so that's a run through of the hazards option.